Want to help the channel? Go to shopclownfish.com where you can check out official Clownfish TV merchandise and our brand new shop. It helps us out. Also, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com backslash clownfish TV for more art and gaming live streams that we don't do on YouTube. We want to see you over there as well. Now let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to do a follow-up to yesterday's Last of Us 2 video because things are getting kind of crazy or -er, crazy -er, regarding this game. We're going to talk about very sluggish sales overseas and then we're going to talk about how the uh, the situation with the threats against Laura Bailey, how they've they've escalated. Now, apparently Naughty Dog is claiming that their developers are being harassed. And we're going to talk about how this pretty much is like what happened with The Last Jedi. And then we're going to talk about how the media is going to use that, of course, to attack the vast majority of fans who did not do anything even remotely that crazy. And we're going to talk about Neil Druckmann and his response to it and how I could kind of read a little bit of smarm in there, and I want to point out that the people he thinks are causing these problems might not be the people he's expecting or blaming. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We're at about 125,000 subs. We appreciate it so much. Uh, thank you. So before we get into the other Last of Us news, I saw this on Twitter, I think it was last night, and uh, they're basically... <laughs> They're basically giving the damn game away. They're giving it away. Pick three games and get a free copy of The Last of Us Part Two, is what this supposedly says. Now, this is from um, Hong Kong. Look at all the copies. Look at all the copies of The Last of Us Two. They've got piled up. And I remember when The Last Jedi came out on Blu-ray. Now, there weren't nearly as many copies of it as there are The Last of Us 2 at this game store. But I do remember there being quite a few copies of the, the Last Jedi that just were not moving. People weren't interested. Look at this. They're all, oh my God, they're piled to the ceiling. All these copies. So let's see what Twitter is saying about this. This is the current status of retailers in Japan and Taiwan. Actually, it's, it's Hong Kong. Uh, correction, I assume the second picture is from Japan because the Reddit thread said where it's from, but doing my own research, I found that it's actually Hong Kong. Okay, not that it would matter. It still looks like it failed in two countries already and probably in all of Asia. So this is Japan and Taiwan. Okay, let's see here. We've got uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong. Okay, so yeah, it's not doing very well in Germany. This fan service game says, uh, we got a copy of Fallout 76 for every controller we bought. I have the feeling we'll see that again with The Last of Us Part 2. Looks like this game is angling to join E.T. in the landfill. Of course, E.T. for the Atari 2600. Huge, huge failure. Uh, we'll probably somehow win Game of the Year. I'm going to talk about that because they're already pushing for it. Just like how they got all those perfect scores. Yeah, it's doing so poorly. This is, okay. Um, yeah, it did debut at number one in Japan, but it dropped to number four. It dropped to number four in week two. Uh, so it's not doing that great. Again, this article coming from the Spiel Times, Last of Us Part 2 sales dropped 85% week over week in Japan. It came in fourth, fourth place. Yeah, not, not very well. Not very well. So it's not doing that hot overseas. You know, Western style games, I think that they're they're kind of iffy. The sales are iffy overseas anyway. But you know, somebody was saying about them pushing for this to be game of the year, which I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. Of all the games I've played this year so far, Half-Life Alex absolutely deserves game of the year. Um, you know, just through July anyway. Half-Life Alex is freaking amazing. It is absolutely a game changer. Uh, it is an amazing, amazing game, but a lot of people probably won't get the chance to play it because you do need a VR headset to do it. But uh, we've been playing it here, and it's it's absolutely incredible. But yeah, they're already pushing for it. Metro. Metro. Man, must be tax season. I see all these tax uh, ads popping up. Metro. The Last of Us Part Two is the game of a generation. This is coming from a reader, right? This is coming from a reader. This is their opinion. It is the game of of a generation it's the game of the generation and the fact that it's probably the most divisive 
polarizing game uh, of this generation, of uh, for sure, absolutely. But yeah, they're going to push for it to be game of the year, and it's probably going to get game of the year, and it's probably going to become this much lauded uh, game, regardless of how fans feel about it because they're going to push this narrative. That narrative is that this plucky little game succeeded despite the fandom's best attempts to destroy it, despite their attempts to silence even the voice actors in the games, despite their their uh, attempts to, to take down Neil Druckmann, even though he did absolutely nothing. Sony did nothing wrong. Naughty Dog did nothing wrong. They did not copyright strike YouTube channels. Uh, potentially illegally. They didn't do that uh, to try to shut people up. Um, they weren't contacting reviewers at uh, different online publications, including Vice and Polygon, to uh, ask them why they didn't give the game a better score. But this is going to go down like The Last Jedi, where every time the controversy surrounding The Last of Us Part Two, every time it comes up from here on out, guys, they're going to mention the harassment against the voice actress, uh, Laura Bailey. And we've said before, nobody should be contacting anybody with threats like that. And they sure as hell should not uh, contact anybody and threaten their children or anything like that. But what is going to happen is that uh, all fans, all detractors are going to be painted with the same brush. We saw this with The Last Jedi. We see that every time The Last Jedi comes up every time there's a polarizing or they mention the polarizing opinions around this damn movie they bring up kelly marie tran and they never give you the whole story of what happened um so yeah naughty dog is uh, implying i guess that they got some harassment too they said although we welcome critical discussion we condemn any form of harassment or threats directed toward our team and cast i'm assuming they mean laura bailey their safety is our top priority, but we must all work together to root out this type of behavior and maintain a constructive and compassionate discourse. Uh, you know, and yeah, it's never OK to send threats, but there's this is absolutely going to be used to paint all fans, all detractors with the same brush. This happened with The Last Jedi. It's happened with any kind of divisive uh, pop culture or anything. You know, where you've got a handful of fringes, as Geeky calls them, that the media will point to anytime and say, well, this and this is justified because look how toxic these fans are. And if that doesn't work, then maybe they're Russian bots. And uh, no, I, I don't think, you know, threats directed toward voice actors in this game are warranted at all, at all. But I think it's going to be used to deflect the fact that Neil Druckmann has gone out of his way to, and he told people, he actually had an interview, uh, it was Eurogamer.net, he had an interview a couple days ago where he said he wanted people to hate Abby. He wanted people to despise Abby. He created Abby to be a polarizing, controversial character, and he wanted you to hate her. Well, people hate her. Uh, fortunately, the hate is spilling over into the real world. But Neil Druckmann, this is interesting. As the people that propagate this kind of hate would say, how stunning and brave. I hope these gamers get the mental help they clearly need. How do we know they're gamers? How do we know that they are on uh, the side of the fence you think they are by using terminology like how stunning and brave? You don't know. Unfortunately, this is now the cost of making popular entertainment that challenges conventions. This, Laura doesn't deserve any of this. No, she doesn't. But this statement, to me, personally, comes across as being kind of smug. And it's it's right there with, with Ryan Johnson and his atta you know attacking all the man babies, all the basement-dwelling man babies that hated his movie. And this is Neil Druckmann, unfortunately, using a very unfortunate, a very unfortunate situation, I think, to be able to throw shade at fans. How stunning and brave. I hope these gamers, again, how do we know they're gamers? How do we know they're not just unhinged? How do we even know? Because I know what he's implying. He's implying that they're probably right wingers. I'm surprised he didn't just come out and say it. That's what he's implying. I think. I think. Well, here. Yeah, I agree with this. Neil channeling his inner Trump can't just denounce a bad thing. Has to get a shot in on his critics and try to lump them together with psychopaths. Well played, Neil. Um, yeah, it is. It's kind of a, it's, 
you know, poor, poor Laura, even though I created this character to be absolutely despised and I kind of put the crosshairs uh, right on her back, you toxic alt-right gamers, I'm surprised you didn't mention Gamergate, right? I mean, this is how cliche this is. I'm, you alt-right gamers who've been harassing me for no good reason whatsoever, you know, even though Sony and Naughty Dog kept striking YouTube channels for just discussing these possible leaks, uh, you horrible people, look what you've done. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. And again, do not condone any kind of uh, threats, any kind of threats like that at all. But I don't like this statement either. I think it's, I think it's uh, smarmy. And he's kind of playing the victim himself. And I want to point this out. Before I wrap it up, uh, it does seem to be that he's implying that it's right-wing gamers that did this. And we have no idea who did this. Uh, we don't know. That's the thing with the internet. You never know who you're actually dealing with. We've had people on Twitter, especially, follow us for a while and act like they're fans of ours. And then a switch would be flipped. And they would, you know, we could kind of tell they weren't like really one of our followers because some of the stuff they were saying was like, yeah, that's like, how you doing, fellow kids? You know, it just didn't seem quite right. Uh, then all of a sudden they would sort of, they were like sleepers. They would just all of a sudden start, you know, posting all this anti-clownfish TV stuff. Um, well, I used to be one of their followers, but then they made a video I didn't like and I can't support them anymore. It's like, no, you were never, ever, ever one of our followers. Uh, you were lying in wait uh, to pounce. And uh, we had multiple people doing this at the same time at one point in time. So it seemed like it was coordinated. Um, it, it is possible. It's not the people you think it actually is. It could actually be people who, uh, you know, again, obviously they're crazy, whoever they are. You know, whoever they are, they're crazy. And I, ca I cannot condone what they're doing. But it could be people who really just want to see their, their perceived enemies, the right wing gamers, get blasted by the media and it sounds psychotic but we've seen it happen before and i brought this article up a while ago uh geek dad put this article out and i think it's actually a pretty good article talking about you know uh, toxic cartoon fans and you know again it's just a cartoon show but they're talking about how fan artists were getting needles and cookies and how steven universe fans were actually harassing people who worked on the show because they didn't get the ship they wanted and uh, how to you know how toxic shipping can be and it literally could be anybody. Any mentally ill person out there could be sending uh, Laura Bailey threats just just to watch the world burn, just to watch what would happen, uh, just to get. And we've seen it in comics. You see it in the situation with comics. You've got people stirring up all kinds of crazy, all kinds of craziness behind the scenes over comic books. You know, it spills over into the real world. People playing both sides of whatever uh, just because they have nothing better to do. And with everybody being quarantined as long as they have been, we're going to see a lot of mentally ill people and they're going to latch on to uh, huge talking points. And right now, The Last of Us 2, you know, is getting a lot of attention. So you're going to get crazy people, you know, latch on to that. And, uh, you know, I hope those people get help. Uh, I hope Laura Bailey does not actually have any kind of encounter with any of these people. Uh, it's been my experience. A lot of these people are just kind of cowards anyway. They're keyboard warriors, but they're not actually, uh, doesn't actually bleed over into the real world, you know, thankfully. But still, it's 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 pretty unsettling. We get, uh, we get all kinds of threats. We get all kinds of crazy, I, God, we get people send us crazy ass emails to our business email address uh really insane stuff and we just kind of blow it off you know it comes with the territory you can't do youtube and have you know hundreds of thousands of followers and get millions of views a month and not have you know not and be immune to crazy people when you're working on the biggest video game title of the year as they keep saying you're gonna have crazy people latch on to that and it might not be for the reasons that neil Druckmann thinks it might actually be to get to Neil Druckmann or some other insanity. I mean, you know, you're trying to make sense of crazy, crazy people. And it's hard to do that because you don't know what their thought processes are like or what's actually motivating them. But to make the assumption that they're uh, right wing gamers when you don't really know that, you know, is kind of crazy, too. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. And we'll talk later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. 
That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.